The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7 represents the biggest change we've seen in Samsung's foldable lineup in a very long time. It's thinner, better built, and comes in this killer blue color. But what about the displays? Before we get into the test, if you don't know how to understand EWM dimming graphs and want to learn more, head to my explainer video by clicking this card or checking the video's description. Now, onto the tests. Looking at the display under my standard slow shutter speed test, it looks very similar to what we saw on the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Toggling extra brightness doubles the brightness output, but somehow has no effect on the modulation rate. It sits at around 92% modulation at both of these maximum brightness options, which means there's no relief in sight for PWM sensitive people. But there's something really strange happening with the frequency above 50% brightness. No matter what I do, my Oppo light meter reads 990, which is double the rate the display uses under 50% brightness. The strange thing is that this isn't picked up on the camera at all, but if it's true that this is using 990 or maybe even 960 hertz, it would be a first for a Samsung phone. If you look at the graph, you can see what appears to be a double pulse, where the second pulse is not quite as bright as the first in each cycle. That's exactly what the S25 Ultra did, and it ended up being more difficult for people to use than the S24 Ultra, which at least had a consistent pulse all the way down the line. As we move down the brightness slider, modulation stays pretty steady under 95% until about 25% brightness, where modulation and overall duty cycle ramp up considerably. At low brightness, this display is a strobe fest. I didn't expect anything different, but Samsung is clearly doing something different with each release lately, and if nothing, it's interesting to see them working on it. Now, you thought the outer display was odd? Check out the inner display. Yeah, full transparency, I'm not really sure what's going on here, as I've never seen a display's lines move like this. I know from experience that this does not mean the PWM rate is higher, and the Oppo Lightmaster readings prove that it's 480Hz across the entire brightness spectrum. The rate these lines are moving at also has nothing to do with the refresh rate, as changing the rate doesn't affect any measurements I've taken at all. My first guess is that this was a tandem OLED, like the M4-powered iPads, but since Samsung didn't do a marketing blitz about this having such a, quote, revolutionary display, I'm not sure this is the case. Other PWM tests on the M4 iPads show a similar double pulse effect, so either Samsung is trying to mimic this same effect, or it's using tandem OLED without advertising it. Either way, this is a weird, weird display. And it doesn't feel great either. Within two minutes, my eyes hurt and I'm starting to get a headache and feel nauseous. So, yeah, not a fan. Neither display stops using PWM dimming when in the sunlight either, as exhibited by me holding up a torch to the screen. With adaptive brightness enabled, you can see the display getting closer to its true peak brightness, but never actually reaching it since, well, it continually uses PWM dimming. A shame for both the consumer who wants the most out of the $2,000 tech they bought, and sad for those of us sensitive to flickering. On the dithering front, like most Samsung OLED-powered phones, this one exhibits no signs of dithering at all. If it weren't for the harsh modulation rate, I could easily recommend this phone to anyone sensitive to dithering. On the chance that the PWM rate somehow doesn't bother you, but you are sensitive to dithering, this might be a decent foldable to try. Overall, while this phone's hardware is stunning and a massive leap for Samsung's once stagnant foldable division, the displays don't do much to help those of us with flicker sensitivity. As I went over in my PWM testing explainer video, frequencies between 240Hz and 1000Hz are the worst for anyone sensitive to flickering. Since this falls squarely in that range, regardless of the oddities of both displays, I can't recommend it to anyone who is PWM sensitive. Since it was the Galaxy Z Fold 4 that first gave me headaches and nausea, I'm already wary of the Z Fold line's displays. And while this is potentially an improvement over that 3-year-old phone, its display is still way behind foldables from companies like Honor, OnePlus, and Vivo. I'd say wait for the Honor Magic V5 if you're really worried about your eyes. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.